Hello, and welcome to my my first ever video. I found my old digital camera, and it is a decade old, so it actually has 640p resolution, so it's pretty bad. But if I end up really enjoying making YouTube videos, then I will invest in a better camera, something that <laughs> maybe has more than 5 pixels. I have been following a lot of YouTubers who sew lately, and I've been thinking, like, I can do the same thing. Why not? I like to sew, and I've been getting back into it, so I think maybe I can bring people along for the journey, particularly my closest family and friends. I think they may enjoy seeing that. I don't know. But for my first project, I wanted to make a shirt. I've actually been making a, a bodice block, which is just a basic pattern for a bodice that I can build off of if I wanted to make different things in the future. I am on my fifth mock-up, making some progress, but it's harder than I expected it to be. But I went to the thrift store. Well, I was actually looking for some lining for a jacket I plan on making, but I found this shirt in the men's section. It's a 2XL. It has this beautiful blue and green floral print. This shirt actually is very well made. The seams don't have any raw edges. It looks like an interlocking seam, which it's just a really well made garment, which is kind of unfortunate that I'm going to cut it all apart and make something else out of it. But the most unfortunate thing about this shirt is that it seems to be inside out. This is the right side of the fabric, and this is the wrong side, but this is the fabric that's on the outside. I find that very strange. So it makes me wonder if that was an accident, or if they intentionally used the wrong side of fabric. It's just, it's weird because it's a screen printed fabric, so the fabric, the design is really crisp on one side, but on the other side, you can just kind of see colors coming through, but it's not, <laughs> it's not crisp at all. So, I don't know, maybe it was a defect, and maybe that's why I ended up at the thrift store, at, even though it's such a well-made garment. But, it's mine now, and I got it for five dollars. So, my plan here is take these sleeves and bring them up to my actual shoulder line. These sleeves are quite large on their own, so I wanted to make a puffy sleeve shirt, so it's actually kind of perfect. I just take in the sleeve hole a bit, bring this up, and then I have a nice puffy, puffy sleeve. I'm just going to cut the sleeves off. Just leave them as they are and just sort of uh, pleat them into the armhole, and then I'm going to use the pattern I've made and just cut the pattern out of the other piece of the shirt flip the fabric the right, side, the right way out, and then have, hopefully, a very nice shirt by the time I'm done. I don't think it'll be that difficult. Thank you for listening. It's me again. So as I was taking apart the shirt, I noticed that there is a stain right there. It's orange. It's kind of obvious in person. So I realized there's actually a way I can cover this up. On shirts, a lot of times there's something called a yoke, which is just an extra bit of fabric that goes at the top of the back. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm just going to attach a piece of fabric, sew it on like this, sort of upside down, and then flip it up so that it looks like this and top stitch it down. So I have a nice little piece of fabric that covers up that horrible stain.
here you can see there's an extra bit of fabric in the front because I forgot to cut seam allowance in the back. And also there's an extra inch of length on one of the pieces in the front, so I don't know what's happening. And after I worked out, showered, and ate dinner, I got back to work, pressing seams. And then I fold the seam allowance over itself and top stitch it down. And now comes the hard part, the hardest part of any shirt, setting the sleeves. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the jacket inside out, put the sleeves right side out, in through here, pin around the edges, and sew, and hope it comes out perfectly. So, wish me luck. So here, my boyfriend is telling me about how much he loves his electric can opener, which begs the question, is it obvious that we're 30-year-old millennials? And now he's running over to do some sappy stuff. I love her and she's beautiful. <laughs> So, at this point, I have made a shirt. However, there's some fit issues, and that actually has to do with the pattern I made. I um, wanted it to not be skin tight, so I actually added an extra inch in the center of the front here, 
and I added half an inch to each side. I effectively added two inches to the circumference of the shirt, and now it's too big. I was on my fifth mock-up, and I thought, you know, I'm tired of making mock-ups. I've made five already. I don't want to make a sixth one, and I only made a few different changes, so it was probably fine. But the lesson I learned here is make the sixth mock-up and make sure it fits. Don't skip mock-ups. Just do them. So what I think I'm going to do here is I cut the shirt with the original buttonholes and button seam. And as the shirt was originally inside out, the buttons are actually on the wrong side. So I have to remove them anyway. So I ended up not removing them. And instead, I just stitched down that folded over bit. So now the buttons are on the front that took care of the extra width in the front. Ordinarily, to fix the extra width issue, I would take in the sides here, but I've already sewn it up and top stitched it, so in an effort of being lazy, I'm actually going to take in the darts in the back a little further. So hopefully that'll fix the issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. Hi. I'm whispering because I keep doing this late at night while my roommate's sleeping. Not this one, he's nocturnal. But as you can see, I have a shirt. It's completed. I can wear this in public without too much embarrassment. However, there's something still off about the fit of it. As I mentioned previously, I didn't cut seam allowance for the back of the neck, so I had to widen the front of the neck to match up with it, and it's a bit gapy, and I'm not really sure how to fix that. And also, there's something odd about the sleeves. I couldn't quite place my finger on it until I realized that my armhole is actually too large. So what's happening here is that since the sleeve hole comes to here, there's a line connecting my arm here to my rib cage here which basically constricts my movement. If my armhole were smaller, and say only came down to here, the line would only connect here to here, a little higher on my ribcage, and I would actually have a greater range of movement, and I think it would actually make the shirt look a little bit better. So I'm going to redo these seams, make the armhole a little tighter, and see if that maybe fixes the issue here with the gaping. If not, I may just have to deal with it. I'm not really sure. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to see if I can fix the sleeve holes and see if that fixes the problem. We'll see. Wish me luck. And there you have it. I made a shirt. It's very stiff and very crinkly, but I bought it for $5 and it took me about two weeks to make it into something less man's 2XL. So it's not perfect. These buttons are also, also spaced for 2XL size men, so it's a little gappy in the front. But I'm proud of myself. I think I did a good job. I'm going to try this shirt again, but with mock-ups a different fabric, and see how it turns out. Thank you for watching.